hi friends this is window we will be entering the student id so in the back end we have a sqlite database and where the student records are stored now if i am entering five here i will get the details of the record five this is the id this is the name and class mark and the gender i will just change it to something else 25 now let's again see the details what happened if i'll give a which is id which is not there in the table then i'll get the output as none now this id is passed to a backend sqlite database and the details of that particular record is collected and displayed here we'll learn how to do this how we'll create the tables with the data also around 30 35 records are there so visit this url and scroll down and you will get it how to structure and all but go down here you can see there are two methods are there one if you are using SQL alchemy then copy this one and if you are using SQLite 3 then copy this hardly there is any difference in the actual code but only thing that error handling and the connection string will change so once you have copied this just run that one this will create the data uh, that your database you can see here the path we have given here the path you in your case you can change that one then it will add some additional some around uh, uh, there are total 35 records are there and that will be inserted and your table is ready let's understand the layout first so at the beginning we are uh, importing you are using sql alchemy so and the error handling both these two we are connecting now in the third line you see the path where my database is there in your case if you are created in another location just point to that and in the fourth line we are just connecting it and creating this my connection if you are using uh, sqlite 3 as a connection then here the same code you can just replace it was this up to this point you can see here i'm just importing and creating it my connection so here it is the same thing i am the this particular my connection will be using it below in our script so below that is the kinter window now the geometry and one label we have placed here that uh, font is 20 and you are saying what the student id you are just telling that you enter the student id then one entry box t1 this is a text uh, box here we are asking the enter the uh, id of the student now whatever the id of the student user has entered that id particularly will use it further now a button is there this button uh, this is font is 22 we have using just background and here the button click event will add that will see how to add this then what's this string variable this my str is a Kinter string variable which is connected to the next label so this label here we are connecting this text variable to str means this particular label whenever i am changing my this string variable the data will be reflected in the l2 this is l2 is where our output will be displayed or if it is suppose not there then none so what have what you are doing is we are connected to a string variable and this string variable data will change it so to reflect the outputs now initially we are just setting it uh, the string variable to a string output so it will display the output now here here this is the last one the function which will do our main job this my details function we are not written any code we'll write it here and this function will be called once the button is clicked now let me just save this and run once up to this point here it is you can see the label one then the t1 or the text box one then show detail on click of this this will execute this function line number 33 whatever we have written and the output because here at line number 31 we have set the output here here it is line number 31 that's why it is reading as output now we'll connect or we'll develop the code here whenever whatever the id is entered here that id will pass to the function and change this output based on the output returned from the sqlite database that will be placing it here if you have any doubt till this point about how this layout and all has worked just leave it in the comment section we will explain it again this layout we are not focusing because we will focus more on the coding part of it let's first connect the click event to the button so i am just going to the next line here i am comma again <coughs> here i will write the command so when the click it what happens bda lambda now this lambda my details this is the function which will i am saying that execute it 
details now you see that it receives id so now whatever is data is entered here you see my details received one parameter id that we will try to pass it here so what we are going to do is we'll say t1 dot get right from the first point 1.0 1.0 is the first character till end <clears throat> or i can write it okay let me just try i have just okay end it is there so right from the whatever data is entered copy that and pass it to my details function so this will part will read whatever i have uh, up to this whatever i have entered so now the command will pass the id value or whatever the value i have entered in the in the entry box now here i am coming here now this function this function th this is where you will write all our codes what you can do just to check up to this point we can do one more thing my str dot set what i am going to do i'll just write id here let's just see what id i am entering there that should reflect it here let's just run this and see whether that is up to that point is working it has nothing to do with the database now it's not going to the database let me say 45 so details yeah 45 has come let me just change to 4 and so details 4 let's move up a bit here we'll write our code first let's just put a for our error handling we'll, we'll put a try and accept block so i will just put the accept also this two blocks because we'll be handling some uh, so we want to generate the if there is any error generate the data so first what you will say is inside the try we'll say well this is a variable val equal to int id what you are doing is we are converting into a integer suppose if because somebody has entered a b c d instead of id this will generate error because we can't convert it to an integer that's why the accept part will execute it and here what you will do we will set the my str my str is the string variable in our uh, second label second text box so what that what the output will be we'll set it and tell that check input now here is the reason is if i am entering something else other than the numeric value then this will give a ask me to check the input let's just see that step by step we'll go so you can able to, i think the previous one i have not closed it yeah let me just run it again okay it has come up now let me say four no problem so details fine now let me just say a b c now so details check input because this has given me error because it is unable to convert it to integer now we'll add to or we'll connect to our database already we have connected we'll pull the data now so here one more try and exit block will keep it so first try block what you will do is we'll come down now we'll say my data what is my data my data i'm just creating a tuple i'll explain you why i'm creating this now val so this i'm just created a tuple which i have not used now let me write the query here q is a variable now what i am saying is select select star means all the columns from my table from student student is my table name where i have around 30 35 records are there where now id equal to i am using a placeholder placeholder means i am sending to the when i am sending to the data or this query to our sqlite database i am sending query separately and data separately so i am selling this place whatever data i am sending replace it with this place so that is why i am and why it is to be used directly i can write it also the value there is a reason that is for the security purpose to prevent any malice code or any to prevent injection attack which will discuss something some other time so this is the better way of passing parameters when you are writing a query instead of directly embedding it as a string so let's say my cursor equal to my connection what is my connection it is at the top we have got it already here it is at uh, line number four you see my connection if you are using <coughs> sqlite 3 connection then these lines will change and same my connection will be using so our script won't change only the database connection type will change so what i am going to do is my cursor equal to my connection dot execute what i will it will execute the query and now i am passing the data note that the query and the data are both are passing differently they are not as a part of the thing 
whereas i could have given written here the value and single q only it will still it will accept but that is not a good practice you always send the data separately so okay now what i am getting is let's say data row that is the row of data what i am getting my cursor now dot fetch one because i know i am going to not a fetch all if you, there is a multiple records are there i can use fetch all and loop through and display my record set but here it is one only so i am getting it now what i will do is my str what is my str it is the text variable connected to the as a output you can see here we have check output here we have seen that my str the same my str and this again i am using set i am saying the data row what will happen is now this my str or the text variable or sorry the string variable connected to my t2 will hold the data whatever is coming from the table student table where i have already fixed the id so this particular id whatever data we are getting put it here in this set using the set value that's all so but one thing i when i am using a try block i am not i am to handle the error i have to use the except block also let me just paste it. two lines of code i am just pasting it here you just see this is a sql error this i have already imported at the top you can see at line number two so that i am using that error handling that constructor and here i am just printing to the console i am not printing anywhere if there is a error so if there is no error fine the try block will take care of my data collection i have saved it now let me just run this and see if anything is okay my i think previous one i had to close now let yeah okay let me just put uh, seven show details yeah it has come up now let me change it to say 32 probably 33 is the last record yeah it is there now let me just put uh, 36 it should return none okay so no record is there so this is how we can face the records from the table and display it to the user so this is just understanding how a data can be pulled and here the kinter is not uh, working and it is just as a user interface there was a question that how kinter handle mysql kinter never handles my any database it's just a user interface take the inputs or display the outputs all those things kinter is all used that's all friend we have started now with kinter and the database integration and all if you have followed us you must have seen the series of uh, uh, tutorials are there where you can understand the very basic of this kinter and if you are having any doubt or idea or a, anything any error message you are getting put it in the comment section below so we'll respond to that and we'll improve our uh, tutorial also and my request is please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you'll be notified as and when we add new new tutorials we frequently do that also please share this with your friends and thank you for watching